Erika Swaby. So I started this new thing on Instagram where I have conversations with different individuals about different things around mindset, money. It just started, so I started off with money because of money blocks, money beliefs, and everything is money. All right, so my first conversation with, was with an, an American called Kevet Kane. Her name is Kevet Kane. She's a financial liberation expert. And what's the difference between financial freedom and financial liberation? Final, financial liberation is where you kind of dig down into your own finances and you create financial resilience for yourself. You put plans in place, you set up things, investments over here, savings, whatever you're doing, and you create sustainable finances for yourself. So we had a discussion about that on Instagram. So this video is the live video from, that we had on Instagram. Download it and I'm putting it here for whomever wants to watch it. Get some insights on how you can get Oh, you can improve your finances because essentially that's what we all need to, to do right in order to live our best lives deny it all you want fall back on your limiting beliefs all you want in order for us to live our best lives we need money right people say money is not good people have all kinds of crazy beliefs around money but all of those beliefs are limiting beliefs and they're blocking you, they're preventing you from becoming the best version of yourself, from living life at its fullest. You need money to do that. Unless you're gonna live in the hills with the animals and walk up and down and become serene and all of that. That's okay too, if that's what you choose. But if you are dreaming of living a good life, we need to dump the limiting money beliefs. I need to do a video about those list out some of them but anyway that's a different story i am gonna install the video here and then um i hope you guys enjoy and i hope you learn something from this i think it's really valuable all right hello hello everyone my name this is shari kaswebi i'm sure you know me but if you don't that's who i am and uh, this evening this is a new venture and the aim of this venture is to help people level up consciously about everything to help help you live the best possible life. This is called Conversations with Sharika and it's going to be a weekly um, event. I will be having as our guest today, Kevin Miner. She's a financial liberation expert an ambassador for self-worth and gratitude and a proponent for women's empowerment. So Kevet, if you're there, let's see if I can find her. Okay, Kevet, I see you. Okay, so while she's coming in, I'll just continue to tell, her, tell you a little bit more about her. She is the CEO. Hi, Kevet. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for coming in today. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So uh, I, I went and checked you out, and I see that you founded a company ca called Marimore Life, LLC. And according to this, the mission here is to elevate yeah. women worldwide to accomplish their life goals. You're a public speaker, an author, and your process incorporates mental well-being and financial habits for success. I also love your mantra. It says, never underestimate your ability to try. Love it, love it, love it all around. And again, so, so good to have you here with us this evening. So, Tell us a little bit about yourself, Thank Kevin, you so outside of what I just <laughs> said. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I am a mom. <laughs> I okay. um, am a recently divorced 
uh, woman. I um, went through a major transition in my life over a period of two years, mm -hmm. which has really gotten me to where I am today. Um, in that two years, I experienced a major uh, natural disaster. I survived Hurricane wow. Maria in uh, Puerto Rico in 2017. Um, and then not long after that, my father passed away. And so I returned to the States um, when my dad died to handle his final affairs, to, um, you know, care for his, mm -hmm. his uh, funeral services and things. Um, and then unfortunately, a few months later, um, in that process, I separated from my ex-husband wow. and am now divorced. Um, so, you know, that those major transitions, though, are the fuel that has really energized me to to take responsibility for where I am in my life and to make sure that I am an encouragement to other women in being able to do the same thing, because I know that I'm not alone in having these kinds of experiences. However, what I feel is that the advantage that I had okay. is the financial education that I had from the beginning, you know. Um, I've, you know, got my financial education. I have a degree in finance from Morgan State University, um, but that was back in the year 2000. Um, and then I've worked in the financial services industry for over 10 years um, as a licensed life and health insurance agent. You know, I'm well versed in, you know, what it looks like for someone who's planning for a legacy, you know, planning for those final affairs and things like that. The unfortunate thing for me when my dad passed away, though, was that wow. he did not have a will or life insurance in place. And so... What I feel like is my, my benefit there is that I actually have the experience of understanding what it looks like to not be prepared so that I can warn other people about that so wow, that they don't wow. repeat That's, the same mistake. So I'm, I my condolences on your dad and you, Thank strength you. of a woman. <laughs> That's all I have to say. That's... <laughs> That's a lot of stuff in a short space of time. And here you are, you are strong, powerful, empowered, and on a mission to help others. So again, strength of a, of a woman, truly amazing. So um, what exactly, though, is financial liberation? So for me, being financially liberated mm -hmm. is different from financial freedom. Okay. Um, financial freedom is something someone else gives to you, you know, or think about freedom. It's something that someone else gives to you, you know, kind of like when the ah. slaves were freed, you know, from right, slavery, right. they were given permission to go free, right? But liberation is different. Liberation is something that you take for yourself. You know, so liberation is when you recognize mm -hmm. the freedom that has been given to you, or even if it hasn't been given to you, right. but you recognize the freedom that you have. You recognize that you um, exist in this space where you have certain rights, you know, and you want to take advantage so that you're able to, you know, based on what I talk about in my financial education efforts to um, make better decisions, right. to create better habits and to increase your quality of life, you know, and that's something that you get to determine for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not somebody else giving you permission to have something, but it's you saying, you know what, this is what I've decided I want for myself. And I know that I'm responsible wow. for me. I like sure that. that, this that I, I like that. And it's funny. Um, I know we both uh, delve in mindset. So I, I wanted to point something out. You, you, you brought up slavery when sla people were given permission to go free. And a lot of people are still mentally enslaved, even though they, they're physically free they're mentally enslaved so liberation that's i really like that that's really really important because we are free from slavery but we're not liberated hmm. wow absolutely so why is this necessary why is it important <laughs> for people to be financially liberated what are the benefits what what can one gain from being in this space Mm -hmm. Financial liberation um, gives us an opportunity to determine where we right. want to be in terms of our quality of life. You know, um, when we go out and, you know, many people have been taught, you know, that you get a good mm -hmm. education, you go get a good job, you know, you retire and yeah. then, <laughs> right. you know, that's it, you know. Um, but today we see that people, even at a younger age, are making a decision to determine for themselves, right. you know, what does their life look like? You know, getting the education, some of them from schools and some of them online right. and some of them through life experience. You know, 
they're determining where they want to work, you know, some of them for employers and some of them are self-employed, you know, and then people are deciding what their retirement looks like at an earlier age, you know, so folks want to retire at 35 and 45 as opposed to retiring at 65 because they now want to be able to enjoy a greater quality of life mm -hmm. during the years of, of vitality, you know what I mean? So that they're able to benefit and, and have those amazing adventures and, and awesome experiences rather than waiting until a time in life when they're not really able to enjoy it as much as they can in their younger years. So we see people are planning for that. And, and also because there's a generation of parents who have been smarter about their money and have put their children in a position that right. they have these options to choose, you know? So when you don't have the what option, then you kind of yeah. have to take what is in front of you. Yeah. You know, but when you put, um, make yourself available for the options or give yourself now when the opportunity comes, then you can take advantage of that and move forward in the direction that you choose. And that's where the liberation comes into place. It's not what someone right. can give so you. So it's kind of the difference between having to take food stamps and having an investment or something like that. Gotcha. 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 Awesome. Yeah, so, absolutely. so I grew up yeah. poor, right? And I had a lot of limiting money beliefs, right? Some of which I'm still working on digging out of my system. <laughs> For someone like me, okay, let me tell you, share an instance with you. There was a point in time where when I got paid, I was the most stressed out person on the planet on payday because I'm looking at the money and it's not going to cover the things that I need to, to cover. And it's scary to, there is an amount of fear there to know. It's, it's just a scary thing to know that, okay, this is not going to cover everything. It's, I only have one job. I only have one source of income and it's just not going to make it. What do I do? So it creates this, fear around money itself how can someone with a background similar to mine move from that mindset to a place where they're liberated financially or even on the journey to liberation mm -hmm. well it starts <laughs> with working with you <laughs> uh, right right in that mindset reset you know you have to you know, where you are able to now support your clients in resetting the way that they think, the way that they look at the world. It's when you change that narrative, now you can shift your, right. your thinking, you can change your habits, and you can change your circumstances, you know? So it, yes. it, it's a, a, a domino effect, you know? But it has to start with what you're thinking here first. Mm -hmm. And then what you're thinking will move into your heart. And then, of course, that's what will come in, out of your mouth and move you into action as well. You know, so we have to pay attention to what we speak to ourselves. We have to pay attention to how we treat ourselves. You know, we have to yeah. pay attention to what we think about ourselves. If we're not paying yeah. attention, we will pay. Yeah. But we'll pay financially later on. And that will unfortunately being to our detriment and so by paying attention to what we're doing in advance so putting in place good habits um when we have limiting thoughts are we shifting our mindset are we now changing those right. limiting thoughts to thoughts of abundance you know so instead of feeling like you know um i i can't do certain things are we shifting ourselves into understanding that um, I am abundant, you know, and right. I can do whatever I want. Exactly. I how? So instead of how. saying, I can't do this, sorry, I can't do that. The question to ask is, how can I do this? How can I accomplish that? How do I get from here to yeah. there? Those are the, that's, that's one of the ways you shift from I can't to I will or something, but you don't ask, you don't say I can't ever delete the word yeah. from your vocabulary. <laughs> Anything is. There's two words from my oh vocabulary. Oh my gosh. Honestly, I, it's can't. I was try. having a conversation with my daughter this morning and I was like, <laughs> you don't try anything. You do things because the very word try yeah, implies that you're not it's capable. 
I love you. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, she 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 was like, "Oh, mommy, I tried this," and I'm said, "You don't try anything, right?" Because I have two kids of my own. I have a 13 year old, uh -huh. and I have a five year old, and the fact. <laughs> Okay, I will pray. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Yeah. But yes, for some of the chat ages. Oh my, my gosh. Wow. Four, so but yeah, I'm she was like, I, 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 I tried. <laughs> I am trying. I'm like, you're not trying. You're doing. You don't get it right the first time. You, yeah. you do it again, yeah. but you keep doing it. And then my son, he's five, and he's, he can be very lazy. One of his favorite words are, I can't. So daily, I have to be saying, I don't want mm -hmm. to hear you using that word. You can do anything you possibly want to do. And I think a mindset like that around every area of our lives is essential. They yeah. So like, for instance, with your kids, mm -hmm. then what you can start to do with them in the morning is you actually have a oh. list of affirmations that they would before they get ready for school or before they leave the house. And for your daughter, it can be, I am you know, or I will, mm -hmm. you know, whatever she plans to do for the day. And then can I tell you, it can be, I can, you know, and or if that thinking for him and to, to, to reiterate that, because of course the mother of retention is repetition, you know, and we, mm -hmm. we can't, we don't oh. just get it on the first time. It's a process. So we, we need to make sure that we are continuing to reiterate that positive feedback, that positive information, you know, making sure we're nurturing our minds and cultivating a yeah. positive uh, garden as yeah. it would be. Yeah, I, I tell so you a story about affirmations. And I'm glad you brought that up because when my daughter was about two or three, she was very reserved. And at that time, I actually did not understand the power behind what I was doing. But her dad and I, we decided to give her mm -hmm. affirmations at that age so she was very shy and she was reserved mm -hmm. and people would pick on her in school and stuff like that and we started giving her about six or seven affirmations that she had to say every morning before she left the house and before you knew it before we knew it she was this bold child sometimes I have to say to her remember I'm not your friend I'm a mother <laughs> She she's quite bold and she <laughs> she says some crazy things, you know? And she's she's confident to a level. And my son, because now I understood yeah. by the time my son came around, I understood what was happening. So I gave him half affirmations. Every night I gave him affirmations and I gave him I'm smart, I am unique and stuff like that. And what I found was he began to add his own affirmations. Come on, don't do me this. Mm. Oh. Hi. Hey there. What did you? <laughs> I'm back. I'm so sorry about that. Right, right. Yeah, you were yes. talking about so your son and his affirmations. I Go ahead. Him them to <laughs> give him affirmations to him much earlier than I would have my daughter and what I found was mm -hmm. that he after some time he started to add his own affirmation so so, so yeah so before I knew it I, I was included I am awesome. I included, I am a genius in it right and the next thing I knew he was now a speedy yes. genius because he wants to be the fastest person in the world. So, so it works amazing wonders and you can't tell him anything different, right? <laughs> awesome. He is a genius and he is smart. And he will ask me questions like, what do I do to become smart? How do I stay smart? So, and he's only five. Mm -hmm. So, so 
I understand okay. the power awesome. of affirmations <laughs> and I've used them for myself too. So truly, truly amazing. It, and, and that's why I'm here and I'm sure that's why you're here because I believe that if we could level up consciously, mm-hmm. there are no limits to the things that we can do. We could end suffering. We, can, we could end all the pain, all the drama, all of that. It, it's not necessary. We will fall yeah. in ditches from time to time, but a lot of us stay in those ditches, right? And uh, we just need to know how to climb out in order to, to move on to the next um, yeah. level or the next step that we need to take. So, yeah, definitely understand that the power of affirmations. So you had an experience Again, strength of a woman. Three experiences in after each other, and that helped you to shift your mindset to liberating yourself financially and liberating other people financially. Why did you not stop at just you? But why did you want to to go out there and share the message with other people? Yeah. Uh, because in the work that I do um, mm-hmm. as a licensed life and health insurance agent, it became my mission to, to make sure that my clients were well aware of what they can do before they get into a circumstance right. such as the one that I was in. And I've heard that story all too often, especially in the American community, where you know we have loved ones who pass away, and then of course we're you know out talking to friends or family or going to the church and you know, putting our hand out for final uh, affairs Mm -hmm. money. You know, we got to pay for a funeral. We got to pay for a burial, but we're not prepared for that, you know? And so as an insurance, I was, you know, very conscientious about helping people to understand we don't have to do that. You know, we can prepare in advance. It's okay for us to make sure that there is something to take care of our final affairs before we pass away and not to just leave that as a legacy to our families because it's the difference between leaving a legacy of wealth versus yeah. leaving a legacy of debt. You know, and that indebtedness is what many have carried on for generations. And, and what we want to do is to shift our thinking and to shift our activity so that now we are creating wealth, you know, and it doesn't mean, because people feel like there's uh, an affinity towards, you know, being super wealthy or super rich, but it's, it's not about the money. It's about what the money can do for you, you know, and if you don't have the money, then you can't do anything. Right. We have to have the money, you know, and so my understanding with mindset is helping people to also rebuild their relationship with money. You know, often we have horrible money memories. You know, we we have been taught bad habits and bad thinking where money is concerned. And so people feel like, you know, um, one woman talked about how her mom would always say, oh, this money is burning a hole in my pocket. You know, and so when she got older, she was like, I don't want no money burning a hole in my pocket. Now, you know, literally, no, you know, as a kid, that's a a wonderful imagination. (laughs) You know, something that you come up with and you see that visually. But, you know, as we get older, what we forget is that those those thinkings and those habits, those thoughts and those habits will become ingrained in us and we will unconsciously play into them. Right. And so we will continue to to live with a broke mentality, quote, quote unquote, you know, so that we will we will make sure that we don't have to burn a hole in our pocket. You know, we'll get rid of it first, you know, so that we don't have enough money that will, you know, um, as many people think that that money is what makes you a bad person, that we won't become a bad person, you know, and that's not the case. We have to recognize money Mm -hmm. is a powerful tool for us. And if we can use the tool and recognize the resource, then we're able to make the advancements that we truly desire. I agree 100%. And those those money beliefs that we pick up, we pick up from our kids that our parents picked up from our parents and that they picked up from their parents' generations before they stick with us. They stay there. They are, they're they're like in our blood. They're flowing in our bloodstream with our life force. And you said yesterday we were having a conversation on Clubhouse and you said something that resonated with me because uh, the week before I had 
done some videos on TikTok about money beliefs. And one of those videos was talking about money being the root of all evil, that common saying, right? Mm -hmm. Money being the root of all evil. But you said something. You said hopelessness. Yeah. You said hopelessness <laughs> is the root of all evil. And when you said that, it resonated with me so much. Yeah. Yeah, because it makes sense, all. right? Yeah. Because... Yeah. If you look around at the communities that are poor and desolate, desolate, that is where the evil is. That's where people are mistreated. That's where hunger is flourishing. That's where the, 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 the evil is. So tell us a little yeah. bit more about how you came up with hopelessness, hopelessness being the root of all evil and so on. Uh, well, because much like yourself, I've been there. You know, I have been mm -hmm. in the most hopeless place. You know, I literally gave up on life. Um, I attempted right. suicide back in 2010. And when I gave up on life, that was because it wasn't because I didn't want to live. It was first and foremost because I was in, in excruciating pain, right. more emotional than physical. Um, but it was that, that the root of that was the hopelessness that I felt. I felt there was no way out of the situation except to end my life, you know? And so that's what we find with a lot of people, you know, unfortunately, when there are disasters, especially natural disasters, the suicide rates go up yeah. because of hopelessness, because people don't feel like there's another way out for them. There's right. no way for them to truly recover. You know, the pain that they end, they're in, that they just want to end it, you know? And so when we see from those situations that, that, can provide someone some inspiration, a, a, a glimmer of hope. It only takes a spark to light a flame, you know, and a flame to, right. to create a wildfire, you know. And so from that point, we're able to now rebuild on their personal uh, self-worth. We're able to build on their uh, attitude of gratitude, you know, and from that point, Point, then we're able to to shift their thinking and their actions in order to support their being able to actually yeah. make progress you know and so it's it's putting together the 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 mindset first that understanding and then identifying the tasks and that's the thing you know a lot of times especially when finances are concerned people talk a lot about what to do what to do what to do what to do is fix your credit what to do is you know pay down your bills what to do is you know, um, keep your, your debt down. What to do is to make sure you've got a good cash flow in terms of income. But the question yeah. is, how do you do it? You know, how do you get your credit score to, to jump 200 points in, you know, just a few months? Well, you make sure that you are being a credible person because that's what credit is. Credit is a rating of your credibility, how well you're able to keep your promise. You know, and if you don't keep your promises, they're not going to give you a high credit rating, you know. And so the thing is for us to train ourselves so that when we are in the process of making a promise, we're only promising to things that we can keep. You know, so I only make a promise when I can keep it. And if I can't keep that promise, I'm not going to make it. You know, and so we don't over obligate ourselves. And that's how we make sure that we've got enough m money at the end of the month you know, and that we're not spending outside of our income. You know, it's we're upside down when our income is more than, or when our right. expenses are more than our income. What we want to make sure is that our income is more than expenses. You know, and yeah. that takes some consciousness. It takes for us to sit down on a monthly basis at May and to do a budget so that we can look at not only you know, what do I have as an opportunity um, to, for spending the money that I'm going to make, but then also projecting into the future to say, what are my needs going to be next month? What is the income that I need to make? And if we're not making enough money to explore the opportunities for how we can. But if we're not conscious even of how much money we need, then we won't know how much money to right. ask for when the opportunity comes up. You know, it's somebody saying, oh, hey, here, I got $100 for you. You know, take this $100. And they're like, oh, man, I don't need that. 
um, you know, and, and or or you know, not recognizing, you know, you're taking this one opportunity when there's another opportunity that's going to be a thousand dollars. You know, and, and what you need to do is pass up that hundred dollar opportunity so you can go for the thousand dollars, but you're not even clear on what you need. And so you yeah. settle for less than what you need, you know, and that's the thing for us is just to be first and then to take the actions in harmony with the plans that we so that we're actually so able ultimately to consciousness. <laughs> being aware of where you are and where you want to get to. Yeah. Yeah. It's always going to be amazing. Yes, absolutely. So you have been. Absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah. And so, it, you know. <laughs> okay. So you have been, um, <laughs> you've been in finances for years. What is one thing that you have learned from yes. the people that you have served? Um, that mm. people are not tracking their money. They're not tracking their money. So most people, they get money in their hands and whatever they see in front of them is what they spend it on. But they don't even really know right. how much they had come in mm -hmm. before they're spending it out. And what they really need behind the right. scenes is not being taken care of. You know, so then my job is to lift the veil off of, of, of what's behind the curtain, you know, to make sure that we're looking at what's behind the curtain before you get that money, to make sure that when that money comes in, that it's taking care of what's behind the curtain. And then the things that you see in front of you, you can make a plan so that you can spend on that as you have it. You know, if you have it, then you can go mm -hmm. ahead and get it right away if you want it. And, and that's the allowance that you've given yourself. You know, but if you don't have enough that, then you just wait. You know, one of the, the big keys that I try to teach people is to pause before you purchase. The rule for myself is seven days. I have to give myself mm -hmm. seven days on, on a major purchase um, before I will actually go and spend the money, even on small purchases right. a lot of times. Because where we lose our disposable income is in the impulse. You know, I'll buy an extra candy bar, you know, buying some donuts that we didn't need, you know, buying those things that we think are treats that are not really great for us, <laughs> you know? And so we lose our, our, our power, our financial power, because we're giving it away, you know, in, in all the treats that are, that are hurting us, you know? But then if we're able to say, you know what, let me pause for a moment. Let me not go and spend money on, on that new cell phone yet. Let me not go buy, you know, that new computer yet. Let me look at what my need is. Let me set a timeline. When do I need this? When do I want to have this? And the plan for it, you know, so that when we go to the store, we've already got a plan in mind. When we see that new thing that comes out, then we can go back to our plan and say, oh, you know what? Now I've seen this. I want that. Let me adjust the plan to go for that. But we didn't just throw the money at it and right. lose our power. Pause so before pause you before you Okay. So for, for the sake of, of repetition, how would you tell someone streamlined? How would yes, you inform someone on a way how they can track their money? Okay. To track your money, you first want to um, set up a basic budget. I call it your spend and keep sheet. Um, if you reach out to me through um, my website on my um, Instagram, um, then you'll be able to get a free spend and keep sheet uh, where you'll be able to, you know, now track. You can look at what is your income and plan for your expenses. You know, that's the first way. Um, the second way is to manage your credit. You know, to first know your credit num your credit score, and to take understand notes, what your notes. debt looks like. What is your debt management? You know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the third way is to to make sure that you have a savings plan. You know, when you get that savings plan in place, then you're able to now have power 
so that you're able to say, you know what, I've got a goal. I've got something that I'm working towards. That gives you motivation, that inspires you, that gives you the energy, you know, that you really need when you're working towards accomplishing that goal. And then when you accomplish it, you can now, you know, go ahead and, and use that money for whatever that goal was at a new goal, you know, to do that for ourselves ourselves that's how we continue to grow you know and so we want to see that we're continuing to grow in our efforts so first making sure the budget second keeping track of your credit and third making sure that you've got a savings account and a savings plan in place your savings plan can now be you the money that you use if, if you're planning to, to for either your insurance or your investment and there's two ways that you can even use your insurance as you know, as, as a kind of in, a place to to uh, park your money, not necessarily an investment. We don't call insurance an investment, but it is a place where you can park your money, and it can actually grow for you. You know, and so understanding how money works, and it is what will help you to understand how Amazing. you can get your money to work. For as you. I said, I hope you guys were taking notes. But if you didn't, the video will be there for you to watch so that you can get all the juicy information. And you can also check out Kevin's website for more updates. And if you need a shift in that mindset, I am your girl. So uh, Kevin, I have another question for you. You have been working with individual clients clients yes, um what is one result that you have gotten yeah. that your clients have gotten that you did not expect one result that you didn't expect <laughs> um one of one of my greatest is um the first client that i actually worked with coming back into the financial services field and she's a, a hairstylist and so I was surprised when, you know, she was willing to um, make the commitment that she has made to contributing to her future by being able to, you know, set up her insurance policy and to have a regular savings plan. We worked on a budget for her and I was able to, you know, show her exactly what her finances would look like so that she understood where she was spending money. And, and she could see where she was losing her money before, change some of her habits, make quality of life. She was even able to, to move to a new city and start a new business. She has grown her business so that now she's not just doing hair, but she's also selling products. You know, and so that's one of the things that I'm most proud of. You know, I, I, she's uh, one of my mentees. Um, we talk on a regular basis. I keep in contact with her, you know, to check in and to make sure that she's still on plan. And when she has questions, it it, it is very humbling and very um, encouraging and very inspiring to me that she will come to me, you know, with those questions because she trusts my judgment and being able to give her the financial awesome. guidance awesome. that she needs. See, forward. that is the power of financial liberation. So she moved from an hairdresser to having savings, to having um, a bigger business, and having investment. Truly amazing. Kevin, I want to thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for joining me here. And to be for my, be for being my first guest on uh, on conversations with Sharika. <laughs> I look forward to making this uh, as big as possible and help as many people as possible. So Thank go you. ahead and let people know where and how they can find you if they want to work with you. Absolutely. Um, you can, you know, follow me here on Instagram. I am Kivette. I also have my business profile at Mari More Life. Um, you can you know, follow the link in my profile to marimorelife.com and be able to get more information about the seminars and workshops that I host on a regular basis, as well as working with me on one-on-one-to-one -on -one -on -one sessions so that we're able to you know, put together a financial plan. And this is something that I'm able to do on a global scale because planning is not something right. that's just a local thing. You know, it's not something that, that needs to be just you know, localized. What I've found in my conversations globally is that there are more similarities that we have than there are differences. 
you know, and so really being able to understand how we're functioning as a global community right. is what brings us together. Awesome. And so awesome. I'm excited and to more do that. power to you, strength of a woman again. You've been through so much, but you've been able to overcome. So again, congratulations on your journey. I love what you're doing. I love um your method and how you, you you're very informative, so Thank I can you. tell that you know what you're talking about and with all your experience, I know you provide quality service. Thank you once more for joining us. And everyone, when you see this video, if you're not seeing it now, again, I'm Sharika's baby. I, my guest was Kevet Kane. She's a financial liberation expert. So not financial freedom, but financial liberation. Your ability to create a financial your ability to create finances for yourself so that you can live the best life, live the life that you have yes. been dreaming of. And remember that anything at all is possible. If you can dream it, it's only because it's possible. So if you dream that you could be a millionaire, it's only because it's possible. You just need to get right in there, get the knowledge that is required, find out what steps you need to take and start taking those steps. And if you need help with shifting your, shifting your mindset from the limitations that were instilled in you as a child and even as an adult. Connect with me. Send me a DM on Instagram and I'll be glad to help you sort through some of that stuff because I promise you, none of it is true, none of it makes sense, none of it is going to help you. You're just going to remain poor, impoverished, or barely survive, surviving for the rest of your life. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. This month of November, we'll be focusing on money. So my next guest will be talking about money as well. So I hope to see you guys here on the next show. Thank you once more and enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye, Kevet. Bye, everyone that, is, that joined us. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed that conversation with myself and Kevin Kane. If you did, leave a comment below, ask your questions, and if needs be, I'll get her to answer them for you. And share the video with a friend, someone you know who might need to become aware, uh, need to become aware of what was spoke, um, talked about in the conversation. So yeah, like the video, share it with a friend. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so. Until next time, I'm Sharika Swaby and thank you so much for watching.